Hi, I'm Gil Headley, and I'm the proud sponsor of the Anatomy and Movement channel. Welcome. This conference is important. It's both groundbreaking and ground building. Literally hundreds of thousands of us have gathered here to expand our experience of embodiment and in so doing evolve the embodied experience of our world. Embodiment is a practice that anchors us consciously into that which is common to us all, our human body. Regardless of our differences, and we have them, we all live out our lives in a body and we're all connected by that shared experience. I've been developing integral anatomy for the past 25 years. I believe the human body is not a problem to be solved, but rather a gift to be received and explored. Integral anatomy is an approach to understanding the whole body, which emphasizes textural layers, continuities, and relationships. We notice differences not to create separation, but to appreciate that which unites us all. I'll be presenting here on the Anatomy and Movement channel, as well as on the main stage, and I hope you'll join me to explore the heart of inner space. And for further study with me, check out my website, gilheadley.com. When you join my site, you'll automatically receive three free full-length courses because I'm on a mission to share what I've learned through my own deep exploration of the human form. And I'm certain that these courses will enhance and transform your own embodiment practice. I hope you enjoy the presentation. And now... Let me indeed introduce you to our speaker, Deborah Weitzman, who has devoted her life to being an artist, healer, and truth seeker. Certified teacher of the Alexander Technique Voice, Theater, and Movement, she leads workshops and private sessions throughout the US, Europe, Argentina, and Mexico. In her workshops, she includes her experience and love of yoga, dance, and improvising, as she leads her groups into wild, ecstatic moving and sounding, and also into deep stillness and relaxation. In this session, Full Body Awakening, with the tools of the Alexander Technique, soothing movements and natural sounds, we will explore freeing the breath, voice, movement, and expression. So with no further ado, as we're all very excited about your session, the word to you, Deborah, thank you. Hello everyone, good morning. Um, yeah, I just uh, wanna welcome you all here and, and those of you who know me know I'm kind of jazzed and excited. Um, I've been avoiding teaching on Zoom as much as I probably can uh, because of all the technical challenges. So I'm so excited that so far it's working and here I am. Ah, so I just like to just continue a little bit of the introduction of me and I'm not gonna speak so much. Uh, I'm Deborah, Deborah Weitzman and I am a recovered stiff person. <laughs> I used to be just a piece of concrete. Um, I wanted to sing, I wanted to dance, and mostly I just felt really stiff. Like many who are joining and many in the world, um, yeah, I didn't have the easiest childhood and I dealt with it by holding on, that if I could just hold on tight enough, I would surely get it right. And what happened was that I often just lost my breath, lost my voice. I came into the Alexander Technique um, quite some time ago. In fact, I've been a teacher since 1988. And it's been a continual process. I change, the world changes, my body changes. I discover more things. So the process continues. I'm not gonna explain that much about what the Alexander Technique is because first of all, there's lots of other people, um, panels and wonderful things. I can recommend Tom Myers with the anatomy train and the wonderful Alexander teachers in this conference. And if you're curious, please contact me for questions or, or continuing. So where I would like to take us now is just to begin first giving over to a little bit noticing the use of gravity. We are, everything that we do, there's a kind of pushing in, pulling in, 
releasing, moving towards, moving away. Tension, release. We have it with us all the time. And of course, we have our breath. So if you are lying on the ground, you may just want to just see what it's like to allow your body to just get very lazy, giving over to gravity. If you're in a chair, you may want to just have a nice, easy slump. Ah, falling back. And you may notice that even though for the first few seconds, it feels quite nice unless you're falling onto the ground. But if you're in a chair or when we come home from a long day and we slump into the couch, ah, for the first moments, it's great. But then things start getting quite squished. So I invite you, if you can, to roll it up a little bit more. Just roll it up. Find the sits bones, and if you're not sure what they are, they're, they're, the, they're basically the feet of your spine. And see if you can find the feet of your spine and, and find a little bit more space. We, we really are quite movable. I mean, we are, I don't know how much percent water. It, I feel like it depends what kind of mood I'm in. Sometimes I'm 90% water and sometimes I'm, I feel like I'm only 10%. But the truth is, is where we're quite some water all the time. We don't feel it as water. But let, let me invite you to reconnect with that watery part in you and just find some easy, easy, watery, moving, softening in the jaw, in your tongue, and just playing a little bit with just where you are. And then for the next part, I invite you, if you can, to come to the ground. Um, in semi-supine, you know, I have, um, I don't know if you can see, I have a, well, no, I won't do it. I have a mat set up on the ground. And for, you know, for just some support, you can have just, a, a book, you can have a bit of a mat, you can have a towel, and just having it supporting the skull of your spine. So if you can, take a moment and really come down to the ground. Some aspects of the Alexander technique I will refer to. Alexander would say, you know, when we're in dis-ease, it can lead to dis disease. So I think of this work as a great way to prevent that. That the more I invite, even I'm I'm a very stressy kind of person, I'm a very nervy kind of person, and yet I still can invite in my basic sort of giddy state. You know, when I was a kid, they labeled me hyperactive and I was forever trying to sit still. Now I know I don't ever have to sit completely still, that there is movement always in the body. Even when we're sitting in deep meditation, the movement of breath. So just as you're lying there, become aware of how the breath really can travel through you. It's different every time. Every breath is as different as every snowflake. <clears throat> so just becoming aware how you're letting yourself fall further back, further back, as if the ground beneath you is reaching up like lovely hands, lovely arms to hold you, support you, so I'm going to invite some just thinking thoughts. We have in the Alexander world some thinking direction. It's just as if I said to you the word peanut butter or cheese, nothing that you do with that. Just let it, let it brush over you, allowing the neck to be free, allowing the head a delicate movement away from the spine. I actually love love touch, even if we're in the time of not touching so much, which I miss desperately. So I actually touch with my own hands. So I invite you, 
if you're sitting or you're lying, just maybe let your hands roll up through your neck. Ah, softly inviting the whole head to gently move away. So we're inviting the neck to be free and without pushing, just inviting the neck to widen to your shoulders. Think of widening to your shoulders, widening to your elbows, allowing the whole spine like this gorgeous spiral, spiraling up, spiraling down, the whole torso spiraling, gently moving up, gently moving away, sending your knees forward and away, finding your feet. Ah, maybe having a few sigh breaths. If you're anything like me, there's a lot going on in this time. Ah, and see if you can sigh some of that out letting in a very nurturing breath. And again, exhale. Uh, exhale, offload, sigh out. Ah, maybe with a little sound in it, we will be doing, if you all is an invitation, I will be inviting you to include sound. So let's just take a moment and tighten your right arm. Tighten, tighten, tighten. It might tighten into your shoulder all the way through and then let it drop. Ah, you might notice the next breath that comes in, comes in with a little bit more ease or space. If it doesn't, not to worry. There's nothing wrong with you. Or it's always a little differently. And now the left arm, tightening your fist up through your forearm, upper arm. Tight, tight, tight. Ah, oh, see if you can even enjoy it. Mm, and let it go. Sometimes some nice doing, doing feels really juicy. <clears throat> Again, noticing your breath. And the same with the right leg. If your leg is extended, you could even lift it off. If it's bent, just think of tightening the buttocks, the thigh, into the calf, into the feet, the toes. Tight, 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 tight. And let that go again, noticing the breath you may want with your hands. Because again, as I said, I love this sense of touch. So you just can let your hands slide through your buttocks to the back of your thighs, inviting ah, the breath to slide down the side into your legs. And let's go to the other leg. Tight, 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 tight. Perhaps lift it up. Tightening the buttocks, probably the belly by now. And let it drop. And again, notice. And if you don't notice anything, notice that. Maybe you're beginning to yawn a little bit. I can invite you to allow all your muscles to gently smile, gently yawn. Nothing forced, nothing pushed. Sometimes with a little bit of an invitation, ah, there's a bit of a yawn. So let's take a moment now and tighten the whole, the whole body. Chest, belly, buttocks, everything tight, even the face, squish in the face, tight, 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 tight. Ah, and let it fall back. And take a moment, maybe with less, a little less doing a bit more stretchy. Move around in your face, stretch it out. Ah, sticking out your tongue, right. <clears throat> you know, if you want, take a moment, really luxuriate. Ah, and stretching opposite arm to opposite leg. Ah, you can give yourself a nice hug. Widening, crossing the shoulders. Ah. Ah, and just now, very softly with your hands, I will invite you just gently mapping and inviting where the rib, in, in English we say rib cage, so I prefer to think of it as a rib basket. So inviting the ribs to move away from the lower hips. Ah, inviting this gorgeous breath of space in the, in the back. 
from the bottom ribs to the top of the hips. Actually, the diaphragm slides through us and it sort of joins into the back. You can't really feel that, but I like to think of these really warm supporting hands supporting me in the deep of my back and really allowing the breath to fall back. Ah, and you can slide your hands, sending the knees away. So we'll just take a moment in preparing to move, but also seeing how little, how little effort do you need to move apart? So for example, if I'm going to invite you and, and, and I invite you also just to wait a moment, if I invite you to move your right arm along the ground, or if you're sitting along the air beside you, just first picture that, really see that. Invite the sense of all your body being part of this movement. So we really are embodied, whether we feel it or not. So we're just engaging all of us. And now into actu actuality, as non-doing, doing, let that right arm slide so easily, as if you're in water, so easily. And again, enjoy a breath, thinking of all of these yawns through you, and gently slide it back. And we'll prepare with the other arm, first just inviting it, and then into the actual of moving it away. Easy, easy, easy. And coming back, almost like you're swimming. If you, if you don't like to swim and you don't like water, just whatever gives you a sense of, of soothing, easy movement, nothing has to be right. So we're allowing the neck to be free. We're allowing the head a delicate movement away from the spine. The top of the spine comes to about the middle ear around where the jaw can separate down and away into the skull. I have a very silly joke. Why does the elephant wear sunglasses? And the answer is so he won't be recognized or she won't be recognized. It's not a very funny joke, just a little bit of a joke because a little bit of a real smile or laugh inside helps give a little more space. All right, so allowing the neck to be free, allowing the head a delicate movement away from the spine. Slowly, slowly prepare to start turn to the side where this is of course, obviously a very short taste of all these things. And I wanna take you through a couple of other things. So move to the side. And if you can, while you're there again, just maybe inviting ah, this really luscious move from the ribs away from the hips. All right, inviting also the organs. If you want, you can even use your hand just to roll a little bit inside your belly. Also the organs, waking them up and slowly, slowly prepare to stand. Do it easy, easy. This is the only time you can hurt yourself with this kind of work. <sighs> so that you're not getting too dizzy. So we're slowly, slowly gonna come up to an easy stand. Great. And just where you are, just finding your feet. I know you're not seeing the whole of me, but your feet are about hip distance apart. And just take a moment and just really let yourself somehow jiggle, shake. And let's bring in a little bit of, I'm still not quite awake here. I'm not, I'm not such a morning person. So this, uh, this 11 a.m. is still not quite the middle of my night, but I'm not quite awake. So I'm not gonna force my voice. I'm first gonna be very gentle with some easy, easy humming sounds. Um, I'm just gonna let myself a little bit wiggle and maybe using my hands, just warming up my neck, my shoulders, 
Ah, you don't have to sound like me. Really find where's your sound. Um, if you want with your lips closed, thinking of a yawn behind. Hmm, if you have this hum, or if you do yoga and you have this om, you can feel the vibration of the sound on your chest. Hmm, and really invite that vibration to travel through your body. Hmm, through our cheekbones, hmm, to our head. Right. So we're really inviting. There's so many wonderful places. You don't even have to know the names of all these wonderful places where the sound can echo and vibrate. Right. So for me, sounding, I mean, some days I feel like I really can sing. Other days I feel like I can't. It doesn't matter if you think, oh, no, no, I don't sing. That's, that's just a thought, but you do speak. And if you speak, therefore you are moving vibration. So singing is just moving that vibration a little bit more. Thinking of it as sounding, of expressing. Right, so now I invite you to have a nice humming shower. Right, into your buttocks and your back. Wow. Yeah, really inviting some space and be adventurous. I'm staying a bit close to this microphone, but I invite you to move away from the screen. If you can hear me and I'll soon be playing some music, just move away. We're, we're so much on the screen that it's actually a delightful possibility to move away and take up space, be a little bit in your room, noticing your room. Maybe if you have a wall to lean against, you can find some support. Right, great, great. And either of you wanna come back to the screen to see me, if not, just stay where you are and find maybe a little wider stance so that your feet are, are more than hip distance. They're a little bit now, you're a bit of a triangle. So we're gonna reach out with one arm and I'm gonna reach out with the other leg. All right, and I'm really thinking of lots of mozzarella cheese, even if I don't eat mozzarella cheese so much, but I think of it with my sound. Ah, then I'm inviting the sound to move away from me. And let's go to the other side. So I'm stretching out, fingers away into the legs, moving, 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 great. Ah, right. ah stretching, 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 easy, easy, easy. Inviting all the muscles to gently smile, gently yawn, great. And giving the head ah, some brushes away. If you're comfortable with your back and you want to hang over into gravity, just giving over, please do so. We'll just take one more moment to come back to a, an easy stance and just playing a little bit with balance. Ah, so I don't invite you to completely let go. If you do, we will fall. And most of us don't want to fall. So after we're very little and we learn to balance our heads and learn to walk, we learn ways of stopping our bodies from falling. Um, I invite you later in your own time with a mat or a rug to explore that. But for now, just a moment of really seeing what that's like, even if you're a little bit doing, to really stand so tall, allowing the neck to be free, moving away, moving away, moving away. And then see what that's like when you just let it fall, fall, fall down, fall, fall. It's like as if you're melting, 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 melting. Ah, great. And again, taking space, 
See if you can really expand out with your feet, out with your legs, your big, 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 ah, and then really melting, 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 melting. Small, small, small. And then one last moment before I put the music on. See what that's like when we, when we feel a little bit more unsure and we're, you know, there's something in our old, you all, you all know this, our old, you know, freezer flight and all that stuff. You know, I'm a little nervous to get those words right, right, right now, but you know what I mean? We get into this kind of, you know, we think we're protecting ourselves because we feel it, we feel the tension. But in fact, we're putting the whole mechanism in a disadvantage. To be more at ease actually gives more possibility to move, to, to move away. So see if you can find, in a way, your best balance, where you're really finding this suspense, this breath of space, and to the wrists, the elbows, all to the joints, through the jaw, softening in the tongue, all right. Great, so I'm going to put on some, some sound, some music. Um, I did actually uh, create all this music. Um, uh, so some of them I just made even just a few days ago, including the first one that I will play. So I hope that you will hear. So I invite you to start picking up more room in your, where you are. Uh, don't care about being in tune. Who are you today? Where are you? Uh, big bands, great, deep great. I mean, I'm going to want to play to You can't hear me, Sylvia? You couldn't hear your words. You can't hear my words. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, let's try, we'll try one more. Can you hear me now? Is this okay? Or is this better like this? Better? No? No? 
Like like this? Is better? Okay. Okay, so yeah, you hear me? No? Sorry? If you could turn the music maybe a tiny bit lower, then it will be perfect. Like this? Like this? Okay, and you hear me now? Very well, thank you. Okay. Okay, so this is a little bit faster, so just find, find the wiggle in you. Rachel, you can hear me? You can. Okay. Finding movement in your shoulders. Find your breath. Move away from your screen, move toward the screen. And what does it mean for you to be silly? What does that mean for you to be happy? What, if, what does it mean for you to be frustrated? Put it into the dance, put it into the movement. What are you concerned about? What are you scared about? <laughs> and the next one is gonna be a little bit more aggressive. Just let the movement hold that. Find some ways. And just have a little move about. Are you hearing me? You're hearing me okay? You're hearing me, Rachel? No? Okay, great. Okay, you hear me? Yeah, great, 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 okay. Always the technical part of all this. 
Okay, so now we're going to come a little bit slower. Of course, this is just a little mini, mini taste. So I'm going to try, uh, this is a song of mine called Right Here. I'm fine right here. So whatever that means for you, I'm fine right here. Really expand into being fine right here. You hear me with the with the sound? In the dark when it's early morning, I can't see you. Oh, I know it's you, but I feel and the way I heal, there's no doubt. Maybe you have an animal you want to dance so with. Nice and warm like a fine hat. I can see that now it's right in this morning light. Now I know. And I know that clouds will come, the winds will blow, and then they will clear. Be adventurous, take up some space. I'm far right here. By the shore, by this gorgeous shore, there's a warm breeze. And a feeling of something rare, like if someone's there who can see. Wanna know, wanna feel the glow of the wise one Without watching, wanna stand on the damn cool sand All alone And I know that clouds will come Winds will blow and then they will clear I'm fine right And find romance, gonna sing and dance without the fear. I'm fine right here. See that now it's wrapped by this pale moonlight. Now I know, and I know that clouds will come, winds will blow, storms will rage, and then they will clear. I'm fine right here. And just have a walk about, drink some water if you have it near you. Great, great, great. So we're going to do one last one. And actually, I just, <laughs> I've been working with a, a wonderful producer in Argentina because I'm writing a musical. And he just sent me the track that we created uh, yesterday. So uh, Rachel, you haven't heard this one yet. This is a new one. So if you want to continue slowly moving, or if you want to come back to the ground, your invitation. Just invite you wherever you are to expand. Feeling safe. Riding the breath into your back, 
Thank you so much. We're going to come slowly back to the screen, but take your time, take your time. I will already answer one question that I see. Um, can you tell us a bit how you are creating your music? Um, I am a singer songwriter and it's been my whole life, so I won't be able to answer that very well right now, but please contact me. Uh, my email address has been given. 
I'm Deborah Jean Weitzman, W-E-I-T-Z-M-A-N. Uh, on Facebook, contact me for any questions. Um, and then I can explain further how created music. But in this case, I actually sat down at the piano, made a track with GarageBand, sent it as a file to my beloved, wonderful Marcelo in Buenos Aires, and he put the violins on it and sent it back. So that's the technical bit of it. Okay, so let's see if there are any other questions right now. Um, if there are any questions, I will gladly answer. Um, I already see another question, yeah. So how, how do you have to be a dancer? Do you have to be a singer to do this kind of work? And I can tell you, no. That for me, I mean, there's even a work called toning that is only about making sound. Um, I, I'm not a practitioner of that, although I have done it, but I am a practitioner of just staying alive as healthy as I can. And for me, making sound and moving, however, however, however you can, even if moving for you is from this to this, that's grand. Even if sounding is from, that's grand. Just whatever peeps or squeaks or I mean, if you, if you have any tiny babies around you that are beginning to create or begin to explore sound, hang around them and mirror them. You know, when we were tiny ones, we were find how your tongue moves. Find how your lips move. Find all the sounds that are there. It's quite, sorry, it just got a little bit cold here in Norway. Um, when, as soon as I stop moving, it gets a bit cold. But find, find all the wonderful, wonderful spaces that are in us, that really are in our bodies. I used to be a terrible, terrible compulsive overeater, and I used to feel that I would die if I didn't eat. I did do a lot of 12-step work, but the Alexander work and this stuff helped me enormously that I would take a feeling that felt like if I, I will die if I don't go there and I can move it. You know, I haven't had my eating thing for about 40 years. I've been sober for 10 years, but I still wake up some days a little bit insane. So I have to move my, my feelings of that, my feelings of panic, my feelings of any kind of fear or anxiety. So any other, any other questions coming up? Anybody there in the in my live group have a, any kind of question or thought? Rachel, I don't know if you can can I unmute you or you can be un, I don't know how to do that. You want to yeah? Um, do you want to write it? Well, um, I can't I can't see it. In the meantime, if you can write it because I can't I can't hear you unfortunately, and I'm a little bit technically challenged, so I'm very excited. <laughs> I can hear you now. Yes, Rachel. Hi, thank you for an amazing session. I wanted to say, first of all, and it was really, really beautiful. Yeah, I, um, my, my question to you would be um, if you could share a little bit more about how the sounding has supported you during your life and how that could support, you know, like for people who were quite um, embarrassed about making sound, like any tips or anything around um, overcoming some of those challenges and obstacles and barriers that, that we can sometimes have? Uh, that's a great question. Um, first of all, I want to just share with you that most of us, including Barbara Streisand, hate the sound of their own voice. So if you don't like your own voice, welcome to the club. And it's a big one. Um, with, with Alexander work, when I was going through my biggest changes from losing my voice to not losing it, I often didn't make any sound. So I can recommend that as a beginning where I'm actually thinking I'm making sound. I'm actually almost hearing it, but I'm not actualizing it. Because for many years, I, I just couldn't not do it from my throat. So I didn't make sound for at least six months once and supposedly Alexander it was some years where he didn't make any sound. So you don't have to make actual sound for to receive a benefit for a start. And then 
slowly, slowly, the idea that I don't have to do my sound, but that the sound does me. That sounds perhaps a bit victimish or a bit passive, but in this case, it's really profound that I'm not initiating my doing energy, but I'm in my thinking of sound, I'm inviting it really behind where you would think, here's the vocal cord, so I'm actually going behind it. Hmm. And also when, when, if you walk backwards in a forest is even better where there's trees who can resonate your sound and just begin with something like, no, no, because we, we have the no of our resistance of making sound. So you can stretch the O of the no, no, and just really literally taking a step back and another step back, perhaps look behind you before you do that to make sure that the path is clear. Um, and then you can walk forward and walk back and you know you have kind of a safe place to do that. I do that a lot in my room and I also do it with now. And again, I like to think that I'm now stretching as if literally I'm taking a piece of mozzarella cheese. And I could also invite you if you have just a rubber band or the next time you have a pizza. And when you're actually trying to separate the pieces of pizza, make a bit of sound because we are so adaptive and without feeling or knowing the brain gets this other information which sends it to the muscle spindles. So I don't know, does that give a little answer, Rachel? Yeah, I, I don't know if anyone else has a question there for me. Um, yeah, I can just say uh, another question that I often get is, um, how much time do I need? We did an hour. I don't always have an hour. So I would like to invite you that you can have five minutes here, five minutes there, in between. I mean, if you work, you know, now everything is out of all the normal, but if you actually do work in an office, I used to tell my students, um, shall we say in the before time, to go into the restroom and just be in the stall, you know, and just, Oh, as if you're making a yawn. Everybody's allowed to yawn if you're not working that moment. <laughs> you're allowed to yawn in the, in, in the toilet. So, uh, mm, so making some sound there or in between. I mean, when I first came to Norway, I don't, I don't know how many Norwegians were making sound outside. But now if you come to the city, a lot of Norwegians are singing on their bicycles and through the forest and, and I'm to blame for that. Over the years, I've gotten my students singing, 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 singing. And, and again, if you don't like the word singing, throw the word singing, because that comes with a lot of judgment. We can think of the vibration, you know. Uh, if you want to just try that with me. Uh, there's something about when, you know, we, we got it from the apes, but it feels really grand where you, uh, and something about, Hitting, it just kind of ricochets all through you. So, I mean, don't hit yourself that it hurts, but a little bit of that really brings some, some sound. And the same for the idea of dancing. I mean, I obviously practice five rhythms, open floor, um, ecstatic dance. I've done this way before. I mean, I grew up in New York City when Gabrielle Roth was creating her. Five rhythms. But we in New York, where I grew up, we were just dancing all the time, all the time. I, I see you, Sylvia. Is it the end? Are we to the end now? Okay, so I just have a couple of my last tips for you. Are you going to ask me about my tips? I am. I was going. Sorry, I, I hope it's First, going right. I would like to ask you where we can find more about you and your work. If you can please share with us where we can find you. So my email address, shall I write it in the in the chat? Virginia will write it. If you want to tell us maybe uh, if if you have a website book. www.deborah, D-E-B-O-R-A-H, J from Jan, E-A-N-N-E.com -N -N -E is my website. 
I have a book called Pandora Learns to Sing. I shall show you. Um, and I was very, very, very afraid to sing. And I, um, well, it's, this is actually a story. It's not a how-to book, but in the story of how I found my courage to sing, yeah, some people have definitely gotten some courage. So this is available either contacting me or on Amazon, which I actually hate using, but okay, I want to use it to sell my book, but. Um, uh, and yeah, and with uh, Facebook, Deborah, D-E-B-O-R-A-H-J-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, separate words, and W-E-I-T-Z-M-A-N, Facebook. I, I don't love Facebook, but I do use it and I do respond quite quickly. And um, I'd love to help you at all in your journey. I also have another website, www.creativehealthyliving.com all together, creativehealthyliving.com, where I help people put together a package that fits them. Because we're all so different. We're so much the same, and yet we're so different. So um, any, any other last questions or thoughts or? I'm gonna come back to you in just one moment, indeed, for your final tip. But before, I would like, first of all, to thank you very, very much for a beautiful hour together. And I don't know if you get a chance to catch it, but there was a lot of love coming for you into the set. So this session really inspired everyone that was here. Thank you so much. So I would also like to mention to everyone that was here that if you would like to own this session to go through it over and over again, and go deeper maybe into exploring the Alexander technique through other sessions. You can own the conference. You can do that by going to the website embody embodimentconference.org slash upgrade to get access for life to all of the sessions, get a mind map on how to approach the videos, getting the audio only versions that it's wonderful if you wanna move outside and all the goodness. Please get in contact with each other in the coffee break rooms. That's a wonderful opportunity if you want to share more about what you've experienced during the day and maybe even into your whole life. And that was it from me. So please, Deborah, can you share with us your top tip to stay embodied? Well, I think I, I more or less did. So I just invite you to find some part of your day. Maybe you already do it. Um, if, you, if you move and don't sound, add in some kind of sounds. Again, think of food that you like that you're mm, or, or that you're ah, having a yawn as a start, mm, inviting the movement of your tongue. Um, and if you sound and don't move, find some way of moving. And if you already move, perhaps move with the idea of communicating, of expressing. There's so much that we carry and it feels wonderful to offload it. And of course, cherish and enjoy the sensuality of your breath. Awesome. Thank you so much for your beautiful energy. Thank you for sharing with us. And thank you to everyone that joined this session. I hope you will have a wonderful time during this. Yeah, and thanks, thanks, Mark Walsh and all the great team, what Roth and Miriam and Joe and Louisiana who are so helpful and you, Sylvia. And yeah, and do support this um, project. Um, it is a cool thing to have. So I, I really recommend buying, buying the package so we can listen to it on our cold, cold stormy nights coming up. So, and thank you all who joined me. Thank you, thank you, Karina, Louise, and, and Corinne and Karina and everybody who I can't see, Asa. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think we're done, huh? I did it. Woo! Woo! <laughs> it was awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, am I relieved. <laughs> so it was, was it only just a little piece that you couldn't hear me? Yeah, a tiny bit. Okay, great, great, good. Right. Thank you. So I can go now, I'm finished. Yes. Uh, thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm.